Thanks for tuning in to uh, another video. This time it's a Rockola 444. Normally a pretty reliable box, not that tough to work on. This one looked cosmetically good, but that was uh, deceiving because uh, there were a lot of issues here. Uh, most of them were caused by the previous owner or a well-meaning repair person. And so I wanted to go over that. And uh, But the, the three problems, that we had here were a poor speaker choice for replacement tweeters. That was number one. And number two, overfusing, which is always a terrible thing, but it resulted, I believe in this case, with three of the fuse holders uh, going bad and giving intermittent uh, of uh, voltages. But the, the main problem and the, perhaps the most instructive part of this video will be going over the uh, right in process. Uh, the readout process, not so tough. Four or five uh, components to deal with, but the write in process uh, can be complicated. Uh, I know there's a lot of people calling in on uh, the Facebook uh, groups about write in problems. The uh, write in motor uh, goes runs continuously. The stop relay doesn't work. That's exactly what was going on with this box, and I'm hoping that I can enlighten you a little bit on this because this took me hours. Well, I mean, geez, it was it was a, a real uh, effort. So, uh, so we'll start with the first two problems I mentioned briefly, but most of this video, about 20 minutes, is going to be on the write-in process and what happens when your write-in motor goes and goes and nothing happens and what happens when the stop relay stops, but, but nothing happens. Uh, those are common and difficult problems to deal with. And I am gonna put a plug in for getting a wiring diagram. If you've got a manual's great, but sometimes when you have to start tracing wires and getting into the real nitty gritty, uh, a wiring diagram, it bailed me out in this case. And I, uh, and that's why I want, the point, only point I wanna make. So let's, let's get uh, into some of these problems now. First problem I want to discuss is when you replace tweeters. Tweeters do tend to go bad in these boxes. Uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, they they often look like this. I saved this just for instructional purposes, but this is a typical Rockola tweeter. It's five by seven, oval shaped, and uh, usually 16 ohms. Um, and when people replace these speakers, uh, they really aren't <clears throat> always using the best judgment. Now here, someone put in these Alpine speakers. Okay, fine. They're, first of all, they're not the right size. They're only um, uh, four, four, four by six inches. So they're smaller. So they had to put this bracket in to squeeze them in. But the main problem is they're only rated at uh, uh, four ohms. The 20 watts is fine. That's, that's okay. But four ohms, these are originally... At, at 16 ohms, and you've got to sort of try to match the impedance of the speakers with the amplifier. So, and not only that, they put these speakers in, and then there was no crossover capacitor that is called for to uh, keep the bass frequencies off the tweeters and protect them a little bit. So, so the two points I want to make is, no, uh, I generally go with, if I'm replacing a tweeter, I replace it with a jukebox tweeter. Now, it may not have the same ohms. Now, what uh, what I actually have here is a, I should have, uh, I thought this was a Rockwell. This was an NSM uh, tweeter with eight, eight ohm uh, a coil. Okay, so that's not enough. So what you need to do is get yourself some 10 watt, 10 ohm, resistors to put in series with this to try to at least get close to, oh, that's 18 ohms then, 10 and, and eight, close enough. Uh, if you go a little bit over with the ohmage, that's okay. Uh, uh, but uh, the point being that they weren't even close with these, and then you gotta put a, uh, a uh, crossover capacitor in here to protect them. So those two things were not done, and I, yeah, I, I'm not an expert on speakers, but if you're gonna, if you need a tweeter, 
you can go with a, a lower uh, a voice coil tweeter, tweeter, but then make make up for it with a resistor. Put the crossover capacitor in there for goodness sakes, and 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 you should be good. So that's that's all I want to say about uh, the, the speakers here. It was a poor choice by the previous owner. The next problem I want to discuss on this particular power supply was someone had overfused several of the fuse holders there on the front. There's a, quite a number of them, but three of them had like. 10 or 20 amp fuses in were called for 1.6 amp or 3 amp. That's really terrible. And uh, fortunately, the transformers were still good in this amp. Or, I'm sorry, the power supply. So that was okay. But uh, we had a, a little issue with the uh, intermittent voltages. I would The uh, mechanism would start, as I was servicing, it would start and stop. And we had chattering relays. Chattering relays usually mean there's not enough voltage coming through. And what was wrong here with some of the, all of these fuse holders are supposed to have a little spring to them. And uh, when you push on them, there should be a little give so that they're making good contact. There were three of them that were not. And I finally said, oh, that's the reason why we're in trouble here. So I had to replace three of the fuses with, it looks a bit, unwieldy here. I've got three inline fuses coming out uh, and to replace the fuse holders that were faulty or, or damaged by the previous owner. Uh, they work, they just don't look very nice. If you have a better idea, then then go for it. But if, you, if you're having intermittent voltages, supposed to get 33 volts and you only get 17, your motor slows down, your relays chatter, don't forget to look Look at the power supply for sure, but also look at your fuse holders. I had three of them bad in this in this uh, power supply, and I just wanted to point that out. Now, the rest of the video is going to deal with the write-in problems that were quite numerous and serious with this 444, uh, especially since it originally worked for a while and then basically crashed, and uh, the write-in motor would... Uh, uh, spin forever after you made a you know punch the um, letter and number digit it, it, it spun but it, it never stopped and then when i got that corrected uh, after looking at the uh, keyboard and then finding a, a, a fuse pad um, then we got the right end motor to work the k4 relay stop relay stop but then nothing happened no uh, no wobble plate solenoid no selection um, or no um, debit coil or a selection impulse switch happen and it just basically stopped so it was it was quite a challenge so we're going to go over that next and then at the end i want to sort of make a plug again for the the wiring uh, diagram in addition to the manual i want to show you on the wiring diagram the um, how the basically the, the current flows through the selection uh, right in process so you have a little better idea maybe where, where to start next time if you have one of these problems because uh, it, it can be difficult so all right here we go i just made a selection u8 and this is the dreaded right in arm going and going and going and nothing happening so we have to figure that out uh the last time this happened i had a dirty contact on the right in relay and here's a useful tip when you're having trouble Take off the covers of the right-in relay and the stop relay so you can see what's happening. Well, the right-in relay is obviously working, but the stop relay, nothing happens. And also note that if you go ahead and actuate the stop relay, the right-in motor will stop temporarily, but there's no uh, uh, current limiting bulb going on and nothing else is happening. So we've got a major problem here we have to solve. So let's summarize the causes of the runaway write-in motor. Number one, dirty circuit board and wipers. This is the easy part and there's your circuit board we're talking about here. All, the, all these contacts need to be cleaned as, and, and be sure the wipers that go around on the write-in arm are, are making good contact. Number two, a faulty K4 relay and contacts. So you measure uh, the uh, coils and clean all the contacts. Now this is what the relays look like uh, when you take off the cover. Um, 
and you measure the continuity of the coil at the bottom too. It should be around 145 ohms. And then clean all those contacts there. There's eight of them, four pair, and um, go. Uh, be sure they actuate and there's no binding. All right, number three, dirty K3 relay contacts. The K3 relay, which is controlling the uh, right-in motor, has a contact that's necessary uh, has to be cleaned for the K4 relay to start. So make sure your K3 relay contacts are clean or just swap the two relays and, uh, in their positions and see see if you get a result. Uh, very important though, it'd be no negative 33 volt DC voltage on the uh, circuit board. That could be a blown 1.6 amp fuse. Go up and check that. Or a loose connection somewhere in the circuit. And that's what we're going to go through uh, the process because the circuit's pretty long. A faulty write-in circuit board, uh, a loose wire in the round drum. Well, the wires go in on the bottom here, if I can, and rarely, I mean, there can be a loose wire in there, but that is not probably going to happen. Uh, I just mention it and we'll, I'll show you how to check for it. And then last, a, a poor connection in the jumper plug. This is the white Molex 9 connector uh, Molex on the front of the power supply, and it is shown here in the uh, uh, wiring diagram. A lot of the important wires go through this jumper, and if there's a dirty or loose wire there, you're not going to get power uh, going through the uh, proper circuits. Uh, anyway, the last thing I want to say is if you have to check, if you're not sure, and you, you're you not sure if there's power on your um right in circuit uh, when the right in arm goes around it has a bridged wiper between uh, the the DC comes in on the uh, uh, se segment board there's eight of them eight numbers one through eight so and then each each um, digit here each little nubbin is this is a B C D E F etc so when it comes around uh, if you if you knew you if you pick a, uh, this would be A6, uh, then before the wiper can come around, if you're able to just check the voltage there, you should have negative 33 between these two points. And then when the wiper comes around, it, it hits this segment and that, and that nubbin and boom, it stops. Uh, that's, that's basically how you do it. All right, well, let's, let's go on to the diagram and, and try to figure out some more, uh, Solutions. So in the 444, the sequence that we're holding up on is sequence 9. Our right-in motor is running around, but the K4 stop relay isn't doing anything. So look at the circuit that it is involved here. It's a minus 33 volt DC. You've got a 1.6 amp slow blow fuse. And then just go around. Here's your stop relay. you got a resistor there to check. You've got the... Um, um, contacts on K3, um, the right in relay, the check, and you can see that everything's involved here. It's rather complicated. This is the keyboard. This is the right in circuit board. So all the connections in between have to be checked on the bottom of the machine. And of course, those notorious um, jumper plugs, there's one here, and then all the way down here, there's another one. So there's a lot to check. And also, uh, Sort of look at your current limiting bulb. This connection was okay, but it was loose. And uh, so check continuity across there. It should be around two ohms, which is matches the filament of the of the uh, current limiting bulb. And, and at any rate, uh, I did all this, and what it turned out to be was another bad fuse. Um, this this fuse had blown, and I didn't like its um, uh, holder either. So now. I have a rather unwieldy three um, inline uh, fuse holders dangling out the side, having disconnected three of the uh, initial uh, uh, original fuses, which is sort of sad, but hopefully this will take care of it. I'll keep you posted here soon. It's hard to visualize, but this is the bad boy type of thing you're looking for, a bent contact up on the keyboard. And there's one right there not making good. Here's a, here's what they're supposed to look like. They're nice and narrow. So this may be 
our keyboard problem, or this is the type of problem you want to look for. So we clean the keyboard. We have continuity across the numbers and the letters now. We fix that little sliding contact. And then uh, I tried again and still nothing happened. So uh, we went and I um, replaced the 1.6 amp selector fuse. It would have blown. So now look what we've got. We've got, we'll press G5, which is up top. Watch what happens. It stops at the right spot. So we got power to the uh, selector board. But look, the current limiting bulb goes on and, and nothing else happens. So now we've got to go to the credit unit. I think our keyboard's okay, but uh, next stop is the credit unit. So I opened up the credit unit since we're now on sequence 10. Sequence 9 is doing its job. The uh, stop relay stops. The current limiting bulb goes on, but nothing happens. So I checked everything in the credit unit. I checked the jumper we put in when we took out the album check motor, all the grounds and seem proper. So uh, the accumulator reset coil is, is the one that's not working. So I have a uh, the DC supply here and uh, just to, it, there's, it's clear even at 24 volts, it's supposed to get 33, it works fine. So I'm not finding any smoking guns in the um, credit unit at this time. I also checked the ADR relay and that is operational. So now we're gonna go back to the uh, power supply and look at the components around the, uh, the stop relay. Uh, there's a diode and resistor there. That's the last thing uh, I can think of to check before we uh, throw in the towel here. This is tough. Usually when I um, do repairs, I swap in known good parts to save a lot of time. And in this case, I did not have a uh, spare power supply for the 444. So uh, it is helpful in these situations uh, to get a, a wiring diagram, which really just adds a little extra. Our, our power, our negative 33 DC that we're lacking uh, in the credit unit comes in on the pink. It goes uh, over here to K41, which is the key contact that isn't doing its job. That's supposed to do the accumulator reset coil and the wobble plate solenoid. It gives power to both of those to go out through here uh, over to uh, the wobble plate solenoid. I mean, you can trace it, but this is this is where we're hanging up. And then the components here, we know our stop relay is good. So what else is there? Well, we got a diode and we've got uh, two resistors we want to look at here. Uh, this capacitor is not likely to be a problem, but that's how I approach this. And um, well, stay tuned. We'll see what happens here. So we're still on the power supply and I checked this resistor and the other resistor but I can't find this diode. It's supposed to go off the gray red, which is our main power wire, to ground. And it should be right here. And lo and behold, it looks like there was one there. Someone has taken it out. Now, why this box worked for a while when I first got it, it beats me. But uh, I'm, we're going to replace that and uh, see what happens. Again, uh, uh, these are tough problems when uh, you don't expect components to have been removed, uh, but let's do it and see what happens. Well, we replaced the diode, and guess what? We got ourselves a winner here. I want to show you. We're going to select G5 here in a second, and you can then see all the components in the credit unit um, operate, and we got ourselves a winner. 12 hours this took. Holy smokes. I'll choose G5 since it's on top and you can see, but. Boom. Oh, yes. Of course, the readout works, but all the components in there fired. On to the next case, man. So admittedly, uh, problems aren't usually this difficult, but um, ones that are caused by previous intervention by a well-meaning person and, and uh, resulting in the omission of a key component is really, really tough. So at any rate, this is the little guy. Uh, I used a higher um, amperage of um, diode in there and, and, and we got a fix. But uh, I, I, I hope you realize that 
the complexity of write-in problems. And uh, here in a second, I'm going to go over the uh, um, wiring diagram again, just to sort of outline what you're looking for, because the wiring diagram saved me in this case. The manual said there was a diode in there, uh, in the schematic on uh, uh, sequence 10, but I didn't know where it was. Uh, you you got to, uh, and um, I was just lucky to see that the cut wires uh, were the smoking gun in this case, that someone had taken it out or it had fallen out. It just seems weird that this box worked for a while and then and then catastrophically failed. So at any rate, I'm happy. Uh, I'll show you the schematic here and then I, I think we'll uh, uh, close up because I want to review the write-in process again. Thanks. We'll start with the sequence eight. Now sequence eight involves um, getting the uh, write-in uh, motor and, and relay to kick in. This is a, um, a all 20, 25 volt uh, AC circuit, okay? And, and of course the manual is good, but it doesn't quite give you the detail here that that you uh, would get with a, a wiring diagram. This uh, the so the three amp fuse is the one that gives you your 25 volts, and you you um, come up through here, and then it goes out on pin um, six, okay? And we've we've mentioned that before. Pin six is your so if your right in motor isn't working or your or your right in relay isn't working, be sure you got 25 volts on pin six. Number one. And then if you do, then you have to go a, a little further. The uh, 25 volts uh, uh, for the actual motor comes off of pin 8, which is your red Molex connector. It's a yellow wire inside. So here's where you would check. Uh, again, it's only when the uh, start relay has kicked in, K3, then it, it fires power to... Um, to uh, a pin eight to start your motor. So uh, that's where taking off the covers of the relays, if, if nothing happens and you've cleaned all your contacts up top or the uh, switches have to make around the solenoid. By the way, the solenoid, section solenoid is off, also 25 volts AC. Then just actuate your K3 relay and see if you get uh, uh, 25 volts on pin eight. If you do, then Maybe your motor's bad. See, I, I mean, this is how you just sort of narrow things down or divide and conquer. But that's all I want to say about the 25 volts. It's a keyboard voltage and your uh, write-in motor and your solenoid voltage. Now, when you get to sequence nine now, uh, we're going to uh, the, the 30, negative 33 volt circuit and um, again the manual's wonderful but we were um we were getting into into tr into trouble here we uh our uh our k4 our start relay was not uh uh working now first of all you and i should have done this i should have checked the fuse because the fuse was bad okay so that would have gotten my um k4 to uh to uh uh, actuate but I was convinced it was the uh, keyboard and I looked through all the contacts up there and and oftentimes it it will be the keyboard because well let's let's look at it the the power comes in on the gray yellow and it goes through all these these are the um, number switches okay well well guess what if any of them are out of alignment they're all in series, so that's why the cleaning them and exercising them is so important. Because if any of them are loose or making a poor connection, well, then guess what? You're not going to get your power over to the uh, um, the right-in circuit board, which will go to these um, segments uh, one one through eight, and then it goes from them into the 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 letter number you chose, and then it comes back, and it goes back through here through the letters and again any of the letter switches that are it's a through z, a through v uh, so if any of them aren't making good connection you're not going to get your connection back to the um, um, power supply and, and grounded so i, I just want to ma make that point 
servicing the the keyboard is the is the weak spot of these rockolas uh prior to the 453 because any loose any bad connection and all these uh, uh buttons in series can can really cause havoc so i i just wanted to um mention that i think it's important so then doing all that we got to sequence 10 our stop relay stop but the current limiting bulb went on and nothing else happened our accumulator reset coil and our wobble plate switch never got uh, uh actuated now accumulator reset set coil is in the credit unit so that has to you know be looked at but as it you have to check all the coils in there the connections uh, uh it can it can take a while but in our case i i happen to notice that um we had a diode here i was just looking for any of the components that could be bad because uh, i had checked these coils i tried them i put juice to them that they they both they both worked they were intact so it turned out uh, i had to locate this diode and this diode was down here in in the uh k4 circuit here um and it's between uh, the gray red and um and ground well it wasn't there uh, had I not had a wiring diagram, it would have taken me even longer to find it. But uh, replacing that diode, uh, and you're not going to run into this that often. I, I get it. But still, this is how you work your way through this process, which can be complex. So that's pretty much it. The, the box works okay now. Thanks. I'm going to conclude, and I hope you got something out of this. Right in problems are difficult, and... Uh, there's enough videos out there on how to do this and how, how to do that and general overviews. But from now on, if I come up with specific problems in a problem box like this surely was, we're, we're going to um, post it. So hopefully you can continue to learn. All right. We, it's April 1st, so I, I won't make any jokes, but have a nice rest of your spring. And uh, I'll hope to get something posted in the next couple months if it's uh, something of interest. Thanks a lot.